Hi friends, welcome to Stay Stitching. My name is Carla and I'm glad you're here. Feeling a little bit better. Had to do some research last night about how long the stomach flu can last. And you know, it can last up to 10 days. Wilson's been fighting it a little bit and Troy's been fighting it a little bit. I think um, I'm definitely better today. I'm gonna get this cardigan cut out. This is the topper for the Great Module Sew Along. So this is piece number six. Like Troy told you yesterday, it is McCall's 6844. Now this pattern was a gift to me from one of two people. Either Barbara from Sewing Janie, I won a giveaway from her and in that giveaway she sent me some patterns and I should have written on the back of this but I did not and so it was either from Barbara or from Anna from um, You Got Me in Stitches. She also sent one year sent a Christmas gift of chocolate and patterns um, it was so lovely. And so this pattern is from one of those two lovely ladies. I don't know, remember which one, but thanks again. Uh, I love this pattern. When I opened it, I could go back in my YouTube videos and figure it out. Uh, when I opened it, I remember talking about how much I had wanted this pattern and tried to order this sewing kit from Craftsy several times, but they were always sold out. So Eventually, someone sent me this pattern, not knowing that story, of course, and I went to the store and bought my own fabric. Um, this is um, a textured knit from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just getting ready to cut her out here. So, I won't be in frame for most of this video. I'm just going to be working and talking to you, so we'll see how that goes. All right, so let me get started. So I hope you are all doing well. I find, well, I find that I have trouble getting started doing things anyway. I have a very bad habit of getting stuck on YouTube and I can spend a shameful, shameful amount of time on YouTube. And so um, today, in the interest of, let's see, they have this right up against the fold, even though it's not cut on the fold, so I'm just going to use that for my grain line. I'm kind of a goody-goody, and I'm one of those ones that actually measures from the grain line to the fold and all that stuff. When I see other people sew, like really accomplished seamstresses, they don't seem to do that, and I know it's because they have more experience than I do. And I just need to get better at it. These pattern weights, Troy and his students made me. Um, I don't know why I'm putting them on already. I always lay out my pattern pieces before I do that. I think that talking and trying to do this at the same time will probably change a little bit of my routine um, okay, so I know I have enough for that to fit on there. And then the, the sleeve fits here. Wow, I'm going to have fabric left over. Um, I am pretty sure. So I like these pattern weights. They're pretty fantastic. What I would really like, I think... Uh, maybe this summer I will do this is to get some um, like some rust-oleum or something and spray them a thick coat of paint so that they um, yeah so that they I worry that they might snag my fabric or leave it um, leave a dirty spot on them so that would be my thing that I would want to do um, to, in order to feel 100% comfortable using them on the daily. So now it's time to cut out. <laughs> it 
it was pretty nice of them to make these for me. Um, okay, so I use, I have my cutting table here, which I don't know, it's four feet by three feet or five feet by three, I don't know what it is. It's, uh, it's 36 inches wide by, let's see, this is 24, 24, I bet almost another 24 by probably 70 inches long or something. Anyway, this is my rotary cutter that I use. I'm kind of starting to think I might need a new one. Um, this is a Martelli, and it's supposed to be really good for people who have um, trouble with their hands. And I don't really have trouble with my hands, but I saw an advertisement for this one, and so I bought it. And see, this is a brand new blade, and I'm not loving the way it is cutting. So I definitely think that I need a new rotary cutter, not just a new blade. This is making kind of a, can you hear that? I'll be quiet. Hear that snapping? I don't know what that is. It's cutting all right. Not great though. Flat place on this. Maybe, maybe my blades aren't very good. These aren't like name brand blades. These are whatever was cheap on, um, e not eBay, on Amazon. So maybe I need to buy better blades. You guys let me know what you think. Huh, weird. So how are you doing? Are you socially isolating? I am, but I realize that because I'm an introvert and I like to be at home, I realize that it's easier for me. My girlfriends who have been out of school for Let's see, we were at school last Thursday, and then the teachers had to come in on Monday, this Monday, and clean out our stuff and leave. We had a short staff meeting, and we were just supposed to take everything we thought we might need, such as teacher additions and whatnot, home, and, um, and then we're forbidden to go back into the building because they are disinfecting and hoping that you know, if they disinfect and no one else goes back in there, then um, what virus could possibly be in there will die. And then um, we won't be bringing in new viruses. Into the clean building. So, but my girlfriends were already freaking out and they went out to breakfast on Thursday and then I can't remember if it was Thursday night or Friday was when they closed all the restaurants down. And then um, today they're meeting at one of the girls' houses for lunch and they're gonna do DoorDash. Excuse me if you just saw the back of my head. Um, and then all of them are bringing their dogs over and their dogs are going to play. And, you know, I, I know it would be fun because these are fun people, but I just decided not to do it. And it, it makes me feel a little bit like a fuddy-duddy, like I am maybe, and I'm not like afraid, I'm not trying to take it so seriously that, you know, I'm all freaked out or anything, because I'm not, but I just, the way I look at it, I just don't want to be the reason why someone gets it, and I find, I'm feeling like that's especially important now that we know 
that um, the virus lasts longer on surfaces than we thought it did at the beginning. So that makes me think, you know, I think the chances of us having been exposed to it are greater than we initially thought they were. And so I just opted to stay home and yeah, I kind of feel like a fuddy-duddy about it, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I don't want to be part of the problem. And, you know, I watch some Italian YouTubers in the junk journaling community. And, you know, they, they're saying that they weren't taking it seriously. And that's why they got into the situation that they are into now. And so here I am at home doing my sewing. And I know that my friends are good people and I know that they would not deliberately do something dangerous or stupid. Just everyone has to handle this the best way that they can. And I don't think that's gonna look the same for all of us. And so just, I guess, just do what you can. And, um, and we'll hope for the best is the way that I guess we need to look at it. My sewing room is still a mess. As soon as I'm finished with this, this will be my last garment for the Great Module Sew Along, which I have loved. Oh my gosh. For me to have made six garments in six weeks, those of you who have been watching me for a while know that that is pretty fast sewing for me. I'm not a quick sewer. And so to have six new garments in my wardrobe is pretty exciting. So I'm cutting a size extra large out in this pattern. This cardigan um, does not meet at the front. And so I thought if it was a little too small, just like a hair too small, that no one would really notice and that it would fit me for longer as I continue to lose weight. I'm 31 pounds down now, and um, I think this is the kind of thing that should still look decent next fall. It's not like cardigans have to be tight-fitting or anything. So I thought maybe making the extra large instead of the extra extra large would be the thing to do. Done with the sleeve. I have two mats on here and they meet right here so I always have a spot on my rotary cutter that is not, um, that doesn't get fully cut. Cut my notches. Troy has been working in the kitchen today because the counter guys are coming to tear out our counters tomorrow and we will be getting the new counters installed on, well, what is today? Wednesday? The new counters will be installed on Friday. And so that is very exciting stuff. Um, I think they're going to be beautiful. Of course, we couldn't afford Carrera Marble, which is what I wanted. My other choice was um, 
soapstone, which I adore. However, uh, most of you, if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, have seen my kitchen and you know how brightly lit it is. And um, we have these black, uh, it, they just came with the house, I didn't buy them. These black burner covers on our stove that we have a Gen Air stove from 1974. Um, and when the sun shines through that kitchen, you can literally see every speck of dust on those black um, burner covers. And so I thought that is going to be a disaster with my cleaning ethic, which is not strong. And all that sunlight, if I put black countertops in here, they're going to look messy all the time. So what we wound up going with is a beautiful quartz that mimics the look very well, I think, of marble. And so that's what we went with. And I'm excited. I think they're going to be really pretty and really... Um, like suitable for all different tastes and styles of decor, you know, and so you should be able to throw pretty much anything at it. I don't, it's not going to be anything that is super, um, noticeable for someone who maybe doesn't share the same taste as I do. It's just a classic thing and it isn't gonna be offensive to anyone's sensibilities, I don't think. And if it is, well, it'll be their problem if and when we ever sell this house and move out. Come on, I don't know what this wrinkle is in here for. Fabric's giving me grief. So from what I understand about laying out your fabric, if you can get it so that there are no twists in it, in the folded edge, then you have it on grain. That's what I understand. And so that's what I work towards. And I hope that's correct. Do you see now, I don't know if, you, if this edge is in frame, but do you see how this is completely smooth with no twists or wrinkles? Okay, now right here, the selvage is not meeting. But I'm not sure, I mean, it's there it is now meeting. But I know that with this not twisted, that I have it on grain. So here's this piece. And then I'm gonna, what do we have going on down there? I think I'm gonna put this here and move this over a little bit. Let's see, we got the sleeves, we're going that way up. And I think this is supposed to go this way. No. No, this is right. Okay. So I don't know what I want to make next. Half of me wants to start on a, oh, this has to be on the fold. <laughs> it's a good thing I looked at that. So that's gonna go there, Carla, on the fold, cause it says so right there. I'm glad I didn't cut that out that way. I think we're gonna, what I'm gonna start on, I went back and watched some of my old videos. And one of the first things that I said that I was gonna do, like in my, literally, in my first or second video, I can't remember, was make the cashmere at Appleton top. And I think, I think that might've been in my first sewing video. And um, 
I did that. And then another thing that I said I was going to do and I never did was I'm going to try no, I'm going to keep using this. I was going to try my scissors, but I just am not into it. Um, the other thing that I said I was going to do years ago for Make 9 was to go through my Craftsy classes and actually sew the stuff for some of those classes. And so I think I might do that. I did a video on which one I should do. And I think the Palmer Plush one won. That Palmer Plush fitting class won. But I'm not in the mood for it right now. I thought what I might do is the um, Diana Rupp class. It's a super beginning class. And it has an envelope pillow lesson. And then it has a pencil skirt lesson. She she calls it the naughty secretary skirt. And I actually have her book. And so I have that pattern. I don't think it fits me. I think it came with small, medium, and large. And so I'm going to get that out and see if I have to grade it up and if so, how much. And maybe make that pencil skirt. And we'll see. So that might be what I do next. And then that'll be, I actually used a craftsy class. And then I have those new classes that I just bought the stuff for. And so I might do something with that. I was thinking about that um, that cotton sateen that's so beautiful that I showed you the other day. And I got to thinking about that fabric and that pattern. And I kind of thought, and tell me what you think, that that fabric is too stiff, that a cotton sateen is too stiff to do that dress with those flowy sleeves, it kind of seems like they don't go together. Like the, the, those sleeves are just going to have too much body instead of being flowy like they would if you made it out of a chalet um, or a lawn. So tell me what you think about that. And I have not watched the class yet, so maybe I will see how it looks if they use that exact fabric, but I'm not thinking that that would be the best one for those flowy sleeve ones. Maybe the one with the sleeve that just comes down like this and then has the little bell, that one I can see. But those super flowy ones, I don't see that out of a cotton sateen. This t-shirt that I'm wearing, by the way, which I have something on the front of, um, is a... Uh, Fancy Tiger Crafts t-shirt. It's super comfortable and a super simple sew. So I enjoyed making it. I've had it for quite some time. It used to be a little too short. And now that I've lost a few pounds, and it showed my tummy, which I did not like. Now that I've lost a few pounds, it's longer on me and it doesn't show my tummy quite so much. So I won't be uncomfortable to wear it out now. And I love gray and navy. All right. Almost done here. I'm slow at cutting out. You guys are probably like, oh my gosh, Carla, I would have been done with this half the time. And that's just... I really am slow at cutting out, but I try to do a careful job. I guess slow and steady wins the race. Let's see what my tape measure has to say about this. I don't quite have the sewing experience of Sean from Kittenish Behavior who doesn't measure her grain line. And so, 
I just measure the grain line. All right. What? See, and then when I do, it's like, what is happening? Why is it never matching? That makes me crazy. So this is 12 and a half exactly. And this is 12 and 1 16th exactly. So this side needs to come away. Oh, great. Now this is 12 and 7 eighths. And this is 12 and 7 eighths. We have a winner. I'm going to put, put this thing down and cut it out. Okay. So, I had three yards of this fabric, and I'm not using three yards of it for this. So, I am going to have enough for the front or the back or the sleeves of another shirt and I have several raglan sleeve shirts whoopsie that wasn't very smart <laughs> and so I've been keeping my little pieces of knit that are left over this is definitely too heavy to do underwear with unless you lived in Siberia or something So tell me down below what you are working on right now. Are you still trying to make cooler weather things? We're having a pretty nice day today, but the weather for the rest of the week is not very nice. Get back under there. So we still need Things like cardigans here in our climate. And the higher in elevation you go, the more likely you are to need a cardigan all summer long. That's just, that's just Colorado and other high places, I think. Let's see. I'm going to mark this center back. And this whatever this is for. I should have used my new one of these. See how sharp this one is? It really messes up your pattern. Like when you're marking triangles, it literally like punches out your whole uh, triangle. So, and I, as much as I like the looks of this pattern, I imagine I would make it again. But I'm not too precious about my patterns. I have, for me, it's, uh, my time is more valuable to me than money. And so I'm always willing to sacrifice a few dollars to save time. And that may or may not be how you feel about it, but that's how I do it. And it works for me. I just had my second cup of coffee and I'm a little jittery because when I was so sick, I got completely off coffee for like eight weeks. And once I started, it's been about a month that I have felt, let's see, we have, I have nearly a yard of this left. So that's pretty fantastic. I should be able to cut out 
what was that? The La Bella Donna t-shirt, maybe? Definitely the front or back of something. Or the sleeves. This is kind of heavy. I would probably do the front or back of something. This color would look really great with navy blue sleeves, don't you think? All right, so that is cut out, and I'm going to say goodbye to you now. I hope you are having a fantastic day. If you have gotten to where you are just sitting and being on YouTube and not getting much done, hopefully you're not like that. Um, it's a problem for me. It really is. I can watch YouTube for five hours, and... Just get up and go do something. Set a timer for 15 minutes and go do something in your sewing room for just 15 minutes and see how you feel. You might feel like continuing on. If you can't do that, then get your patterns out and just look at them or go look at your fabric and pull five delightful fabrics that you want to have something made up for. Okay, so I will be back with you tomorrow. And hopefully I'll have that cardigan finished or we can sew together. You take care.